All right, guys, it's finally here, the 2022 Pioneer. It took me like a year to get one, sorry, but finally got it. Um, this thing's got a lot of new upgrades, it's supposed to have more power, better tune, better throttle body, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm gonna talk you through all the stuff you can see that's new for 2022 in this video. If you want all the nerdy details with the part numbers and gear ratios and all that stuff, I already posted a video about that a few months back, so search my channel, Pioneer, and I've got a couple of videos talking about the updates. But also, new, um, new title page here. Take note, I added uh, RB, ATV, and mowers on here, um, and I've kind of reorganized everything to make it a little easier to see what's going on here. But yeah, this is most of the questions I get asked, so look at the cover page, guys. Also, join the Patreon. A lot of good stuff on there. All these videos are going to be up on the Patreon weeks before they're going to be um, public to anyone else, and there's a lot of videos that only go on the Patreon page. So I've wanted a Pioneer since they came out. Uh, they've got good power. They've got a big dump bed, so you can put a big cool, bunch of coolers in them. And I like the bench seat. Bench seats are great for all kinds of things. Um, they're just great. I love bench seats. My Ram has a bench seat. Um, the problem was the old one had a very high reverse gear and it overheated, and the front suspension links were a little weak. So Honda listened, and they fixed all three of our complaints there. So now I got one. All right, so just got the Pioneer home. I'm do a walk around put up on the trailer because some stuff's easier to point out. So I'm going to try to point out things. Um, the first walk around that are new for 2022. I made a video about this previously using part numbers and stuff. This is the hands-on version of that video. If you want more details about the part numbers, go on my channel and search Pioneer. So Google Mud Puppy YouTube and in the search thing, hit Pioneer and you can find that video. All right, so starting up front, the major difference here is we have two 12 millimeter bolts on the upper control arm. We used to just have one 10 millimeter bolt. This is about three times stronger. Also that, that tab right there, is thicker. It used to be pretty weak. Um, some people have actually torn the bolt through, like my buddy Chris. So that's new. Um, the tie rods are new for 2022. You can see that they're um, threaded on both ends now, and this center piece is beefed up. Um, that's a nice design. I think that's going to hold up better. Radiator, um, different radiator in here. You can see it's pretty nice size radiator, um, and different ducting for the fan and the intake flow to it. Um, to increase the cooling, these did have radiator issues previously, um, so Honda's trying to beef that up. Um, if we come down here to all this, as far as I know, the ball joints are the same, um, and I think that because I know the same portal brackets, brackets will fit on here. Um, one thing that is different here is the axles. Um, the axles are different for 2022, and the threads on the axles are different. So those threads are different. So if you want to put portals on one of these, you have to get custom nuts made right now until Super ATV makes them for 2022. If you need that, let me know. I can have a guy who can hook you up. Okay, um, there's the new front grille. This bumper is now welded in on the back. I don't think that was the case in the old one. It feels pretty beefy. Um, I believe this winch mounting is the same on this thing. I do always have always liked the front bumpers on the Pioneers. I think they're pretty beefy. Um, this is a deluxe model, but it doesn't have the good headlights, uh, but we'll talk about all the deluxe stuff in a second Here's some plastic Honda left in there Obviously the front fascia is different for 2022 um, Talk about the wheels in a minute uh, I think the shocks are different, but I don't know any specifics about them. They kind of have like a little bit of a door rate look to them whatever um, What else can we see down here? Steering rack. I don't know if that changed it may have um, that's about it down here. These tires, it's a new tire, it's, it comes on 27s. Um, nice looking tread pattern though, I think I can go everywhere in Holopaw with these tires. Alright, coming around to the back, let's go ahead and pop the bed. So back here, um, we have adjustable preload shocks, that's because this is a deluxe, so that's one of the things you have the deluxe. Um, but most of the stuff back here is pretty much the same as far as I know. I'm not sure if they reworked the sway bar, but there's the sway bar. You see here, you can easily access your filters. There's the top of the engine with the oil fill and the dipstick, easily accessible up there. Air box is behind that cover. Um, I, the rear axles are also new for 2022 and have the same um, axle, axle thread as the front. So the splines are the same, just the thread is different, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, not a whole lot to talk about back here one great thing about this setup is no rear u-joints right it's a straight shot we like that a lot so that's the talent engine um, go ahead and close this and uh, yeah 
that's about it for stuff on the trailer. I'm gonna back it off now and show you some more. Seat comes off, there's a little latch right here. And you just snap that up. Kinda hard to do with one hand. And check the sub-transmission fluid because when the talons were new, Honda wasn't putting enough fluid in there. Looks good. Um, so the biggest upgrade for 2022 is the sub-transmission. So the sub-transmission is totally redesigned 2022 for both the Talon and the Pioneer. It's got uh, lower high range gears for the Pioneer. It's got much lower reverse range gears. So now it has the same reverse as the Talon and the high range gears are a little lower than the Talon. Low ratio, unfortunately, is the same, but they also made it easier to shift because these things used to have some a lot of shifting complaints. Um, and it does feel like it shifts very nice. Honda also reworked the um, the shifter setup on this. So that's why I pulled the hood off up here to, sh to show you that. So if you look underneath here, this has all been reworked, all the mechanisms um, that actuate the shifter. So you go from park, you see this? When you go from park to drive, it's pulling that. And then when you shift the gears, it's pulling the other cable. So that, that cable down there, you're seeing right there, that goes straight to the sub transmission to shift gears. I'm not sure what this does. I need to figure that out. Um, something to do with the park um, but yeah and then also there's a crazy contraption for this shifter um, that has been updated for 2022 that I need to figure out as well so this thing has one shifter that does your rear differential lock your four-wheel drive and your front locker it's a little complicated um, they have they have some adjustment issues yet they have to tweak them and stuff I may eventually simplify this and to having um, two-wheel drive always locked which would be easy to do in the rear with a zip tie. Um, so permanently lock two-wheel drive, so get rid of turf mode, and then have two levers up here, one for two and four, and then one for diff lock. That's kind of what I'm thinking about doing eventually just because um, the old ones were annoying. But of course, we'll see how this works out, and if it works good, we'll leave it alone. Honda did update a lot of the linkages and the way that all that stuff works. One thing they did do for 2022 that I forgot to mention is they beefed up the heat shielding. So um, a big problem with having a, a thousand cc engine right under your back is you feel the heat. Um, so they tried to seal up all of this stuff better. You can see that they put a lot of plastic in places to really beef up the shielding instead of those little rubber mats you used to have. That way the steam doesn't come up and burn you. Um, the reason the Pioneer 5 seater is useless in Florida is because, well, it has no leg room, but also the back seats get really hot. Um, so there's all this shielding. I already took this cover off. This is the airbox cover. And this is the oil access cover. So you can see that they put a lot of um, a lot of thought into blocking heat and steam and stuff. Now, what I don't know is if all these covers are the same on the four seater, or excuse me, on the three seater and the five seater. If this is all the stuff for the five seater, I'll probably leave it off because I want my heat to flow back away from me, right? I'm not worried about the bed getting hot um, as long as it doesn't melt a hole through it, which I guess is possible. But um, the exhaust is pretty far down there, so I might remove all that. But yeah, so a lot of heat shielding, um, and uh, yeah, you can definitely see, this is like more of a Talon style airbox now. Um, bigger throttle bodies, bigger intake pipes. I'm gonna check the torque on all those boots to make sure they're all sealed really well, but um, there's your crankcase breather. Comes off the top of the crankcase there, goes into the bottom of the airbox here. Um, it's all pretty similar to the Talon. This is where your pipe comes out of the airbox and runs up front where I was showing you. So this is where I'll have to tap into to try to snorkel this thing better eventually. I'll use it the way it is for now, but um, that's a long, long flow path. You can see it go all the way down there, all the way down there. It's right by that universal joint. I mean, it's a, it's a long path. So we'll try to fix that up.